Hello, my friends, my brothers and sisters in Jesus, and all those who are just popping in for the first time to see what's going on here. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for your love, thank you for your interest, thank you for the comments. I really, I really, really enjoy your comments. And even those that are picking me out and trying to straighten me out, that's good. I need I need to be picked up sometimes. And um, those that said things against me, I'm not offended. I'm not offended at all because I know that you're speaking, you're saying things that out of ignorance of, of what the, it means to serve Jesus. And also for all my... my Friends that may be uh, coming in on this on this video, uh, Messianic Jewish people, my brothers and sisters, and I pray that you have a, a, a wonderful rest tomorrow, and I, I, I say Shabbat Shalom to you for tomorrow. And uh, I think this is going out on a Friday evening to go out on a Friday evening. The thing I want to talk about today is actually the, the first love. You know, when we read Revelations and we, um, we read about the message to the different churches that Jesus sends. And of course, all of us, we rather want to be associated with the, the church of Philadelphia because there's no, nothing there wrong with what we're doing and we, we're pleasing Him. But on the other hand, one must look through all of them because sometimes you slip up with something and you don't realize that you're doing something wrong. And the main one is the, the, first, the first letter to the church at Ephesus where Jesus says, You've lost your first love. How he must be hurting you. How his heart must be pining over, over us sometimes being so busy that it's you love God. You do love God. And you love Jesus. And you worship him. But that very, that all-encompassing, first love that takes over your life that is so wonderful I'm not talking about a fleshly love between a man, a man and a woman I'm talking about love for someone who is so dear to you <clears throat> so close to you just think of it as you know whoever is your most beloved person, if it's a little child, if it's your if it's if it's your husband, if it's your wife, if it is it your best friend, is it your mother, your father? Just think that if you've committed a crime and the sentence is for death and a very horrible death and this person that you love so much says I will die for you you can live but I, I'm giving my life for you because I love you it is it is so I don't know it, if it's heartbreaking when you think of what Jesus did for you and how, how much love he has and how what a wonderful king and glorious God he is to think that he emptied, he willingly emptied that cup of God's wrath against the most evil, vile crimes on earth. He drank it out right to the dregs, right to the very last. He drank everything, every drop of that cup of God's wrath. That's why God turned away. It's not because he couldn't see this happening to his child. It was because all the evil, every evil, vile sin 
was upon Jesus when he went to the cross. It was put on him and he had to make the payment for it. And that's why his last words on the cross were, It is finished. Oh, that's so beautiful. To know that he's paid the price in full and the forgiveness and, and new life is there for whoever chooses to follow him. I, it's hard for me to, to, to describe first person's first love for Christ but it is that even when you mention his name you mention the name of Jesus or Yeshua your heart breaks within you the tears come to your eyes you can't help it you are so, love him so much there's no love on earth like that nothing he's done so much for us People can turn their backs on that love. They don't know what they're missing. Uh, yeah, um, I can't explain it nicely, but if, do any of you know of, of um, David Wilkinson, the one that came and worked amongst the gangs in New York and brought them to repentance? Must try, if you get a chance, Get hold of his, his book, or maybe you can look it up on, on, on the internet or something. His, his testimony of his life, he explains it so well. Now that you can't wait to be with Jesus, you're busy with worldly things, you've got to go to the shops, you've got to do this and that, but you're longing to just be with him. It's... It's... it's Possible to explain it, but I pray that you all would taste of that, that first love, that beautiful love for Jesus. And he had a, a little church on the square in, in New York, and then um, a pastor that took over from him, uh, Con Conrad Conlon. He speaks with the same depth of love for Christ and for, for, for sinners. He speaks the same. If, if you ever get a chance to look, watch any of his um, programs on, on, on YouTube, it'll help you because this world takes, takes all of your time and all of your attention all the time. But try. I know a person's so busy, the mother and the father both have to work. And you come home and the children have to be seen to and put to bed and things have to be put right for the next day. It has to be food made. You are so busy and so tired by the time the day ends that it's hard to really have a deep, deep, deep close relationship with Jesus. I pray that, I don't say that you must take the Bible and read it for three hours without stopping or go and, and pray for an hour. That's not, that's not love. That's not, that, that you mu must, must do. You must read your Bible and you must pray. But what you must do is to go and be in a quiet place by yourself and just call on Him. Just tell him how your heart hurts for all the things in your life. Break down in front of him. He will show you his love. You, you will feel him coming and covering you with his love. And it, it is so addictive. It is really addictive, I have to warn you, that once you have a, such a close relationship with him, you can't live one moment without thinking of him doesn't matter if you're in the shops or wherever you are you're longing to be with him <laughs> i don't know if i can ex explaining myself properly but i hope you understand some of it i've read all your comments i've answered those that needed answering i prayed 
straight away for those who needed prayer and for those that that um, said some nasty things against me I don't I don't I'm not offended because I know that somehow someone must have hurt you very badly somehow some maybe so-called Christian that you thought was a Christian has, has hurt you badly and that's why you're hitting out I don't mind you can keep coming on you can keep sending comments to me I love you in Jesus and I want you to be happy and to be to feel free of, of, of all the hurt and um, now let me say last but not least thank you Flinty McDuff <laughs> you, you reminded me that what I was saying that Jesus said it wasn't Jesus it was his brother James in James 1 verse 27 and then another one um, I hope I, I pronounce your name right Naji Abod thank you for telling me the real meaning of Maranatha and that it was not Greek all my life I've always thought it was a Greek word but it's actually you tell me it's a it's a word in the ancient Arabic that Jesus spoke when he was on earth where he lived they spoke ancient Arabic and it is Maran Atta but we just say Maran Atta Maran Atta thank you so much and please I don't mind I look forward to you picking me out and showing me where I've done wrong do it because everyone's never too old to learn eh? <laughs> I love you all and I, I pray that God will be with you and that you will in, find something in this message maybe through through listening to um, you can listen to David Wilkinson's testimony also it's also on, on you don't have to read the book you can listen to his testimony on YouTube and of course Conrad Conrad Conlon is is now the, the, the minister or the pastor at Times Square Church the church on the square okay love you all and and please 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 make sure that you're there so that I can meet you at the wedding I'd like to meet all of you <laughs> Okay, love you all. Bye.